Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I wanna talk really briefly about uh, why it's beneficial to shoot raw when you have your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Uh, for low light situations, it can really save your footage. Uh, I'm, luckily, I used this when I was shooting my very first music video with this. I had just gotten the camera and uh, I was shooting some low light stuff, trying to make it look all cool, and I completely underexposed it. Uh, didn't quite know how to read the histogram, things like that at that point in time. Certainly didn't know about false color, which I know now. So I was able to salvage some of this footage just by the, the benefit that I had recorded it in Blackmagic RAW. And so as I brought it into DaVinci, uh, you, you can actually adjust the ISO uh, between the two different banks that you have. So the way that this works is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K uh, is a dual ISO camera, meaning that it has two different banks of ISO. And so whichever one that you record into is the one that you can then change after the fact. So for these, luckily I had already set the ISO to something higher, something around 1200 or 3200. Um, the base ISO for the, uh, for the lower bank is 400 and the base ISO for the upper bank they say is 3200. Uh, I have varying results based upon uh, what I'll show here. So let's kind of get into some of this footage. So what I've done here is I've opened up uh, DaVinci Resolve and I've just pulled a couple of clips in that I'm not actually using for this music video uh, just to kind of demonstrate uh, how we can take something that actually was pretty dark and then make something usable out of it. So as you can see, some of these clips are uh, pretty dark here. So let's just drag a couple of these down here onto the timeline some nice guitar. This is kind of an Americana music video. And then let's see, we've recorded some that was uh, that we were driving. It's kind of a driving song at night. So we kind of wanted it to be moody and had this feeling to it. Uh, but as you can see, these are pretty, pretty dark, pretty underexposed here. So real quickly, let's just switch over to this color tab. And so since these were recorded with Blackmagic RAW, as you can see here, I can change the decoding here. So uh, I'm going to set these to clip. And so what this allows me to do is it opens up these other settings so I can change the white balance, uh, I can change the color space, I can change the gamma, I can importantly change the ISO. So you see I'm in the second bank here where it goes from 1250 up to 6400 and they say that the base here is 32. So you can see right away that brightened it up quite a bit. So, you know, we're not, we're doing better already. So, but then we can also adjust the exposure here. And so the issue with this is once you start exposing it too much, obviously we have all this noise and you don't want this noise. So we want to adjust to where we have a better exposed image, but the least amount of noise possible. And so we can see here, we switch back to 1250. It's pure black here. We can kick up the exposure quite a bit before we really get noisy. So you can see here that even though the base is this uh, 3200, sometimes one of these other ones might actually look better. Now you see some of these in between are gonna be way noisier than others, but I've found that if I get to 1250, the, the, the bottom of this bank, that it's usually pretty good and I can uh, change you know, the shadow roll off or something just to kind of make the blacks even blacker. Uh, we'll add a little bit of saturation here. You see we're starting to get a little bit of, of color pop, add a little bit of contrast to this. Now you see it's starting to kind of take shape and starting to look more like an actual clip. It's still not very well exposed, but kind of what we're going for here anyway is a little more of this uh, darker look. And so this was actually recorded at uh, HD and 120 frames per second because I like to do these slow motion B-roll shots for these music videos. So you can see here the difference between these two clips already. And these were shot, obviously, right at the very same time. So this one is it's not adjusted at all. It's just however it was shot. And this one has already had some ISO adjustments and some exposure, saturation, and contrast added to it. So let's do the same thing for this one. So we'll switch this over to clip. We'll experiment with this ISO a little bit. Kick the exposure up. I'm seeing a lot of noise there already. So I'm just gonna, like the other one, I'm gonna drop this back down to 1250, raise the exposure a little bit, add some saturation, add a little bit of contrast, and you can see this is starting to look a little more dark country. So I also can change the midpoint here just to kind of you know brighten the entire image 
outside of the exposure, but this is going to add a lot of noise as well, so we don't really want to do this too much. So now let's switch over to this driving clip, and this is, I'm just sitting in the back seat of this guy's truck uh, as he's driving around like he's singing to the radio. This is part of the, the, the video that we wanted to create here. So in this clip is super dark, so we need to do some major work on it. We may not be able to recover this clip. Lots of these I was not able to use. Luckily, I did have enough that I was able to piece together this music video for him. He's a friend of mine anyway, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. It was more of an experiment with this Blackmagic camera that I had just gotten, and I really wanted to do something with it to test the low light. So for this clip, we'll switch over to here. Um, as you can see, I recorded this one obviously at 1600. Uh, this is going to keep the ISO that you actually recorded it at uh, as the default in the second bank. So we'll try this. Let's kick this one up to 32. Let's try this at the, at the base ISO for this. Raise the exposure a little bit. Not so much noise as a dirty windshield. So we'll add a little bit of saturation, kind of get that tungsten light coming in there. A little bit of contrast. So already this is looking a little bit more interesting. Right, so we're getting some of these pretty cool shots up here of the lights and of the sky. So let's see, let's jump on ahead in this clip. So in here we're trying to kind of balance out some of the, the lights behind us and I also have a light in my hand that I'm trying to kind of shine to give a little bit of fake um, headlights from behind us just to kind of give that impression through the rearview mirror. Most of these shots we're really trying to kind of get him singing through the rearview mirror, that, that kind of look. All right, so this was just a really quick example of why you want to shoot raw, especially if you're a beginner with this camera. Uh, it's very, very forgiving, especially in low light. Uh, the trick is you want to make sure that you're in the right bank. You're either in the higher bank or the lower bank as far as the ISO goes because you can't change that once you once you already have it recorded. You can only change within that bank. But this is you know very, very powerful. Uh, if you have plenty of, of disk space or file space on your card or on your SD drive, highly recommend just shooting this raw um, at the highest level that you you can that way when you get it back into your computer then you know you're gonna have the most flexibility to make the product what you want in the end no matter how inexperienced or what kind of mistakes you made when you were actually filming it and if you're like me I'm a complete beginner to this type of thing you know I come from an automatic setting and so I'm just learning about how all of this works how to set the white balance and how to set the ISO and how to set you know make sure that you have your 180 degree shutter angle and all of these things uh, so I'll do more videos about that, how to make sure that you have these things set on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K so that you are more prepared that when you go out to do some running gun shooting that you don't have to spend too much time fiddling with the camera. You pretty much already know what you want to do and you get into the habit of doing this. So I've done plenty of videos and I'm still forgetting to to set the white balance or something silly like that. So you just kind of want to get it, your process you know, in place for all of these things so that you have your checklist of whenever you start to record, you're doing all of these things that you need. So, but recording in RAW is beneficial because you don't have to have all of those things right up front. If you make a mistake, if you forget the white balance, you can actually change the white balance. So these are all reasons why I highly recommend if you're a beginner that you try to shoot in RAW so that you can understand what you did wrong with your footage. And then eventually you want to get to where you're shooting it right the first time in camera. Uh, and then you can use something like ProRes if you want to have a smaller file size. Uh, if you don't really, if you're not caring too much about editing the final product as far as the exposure levels or anything else but if you want maximum flexibility you want to go with the raw format thanks for watching this video i hope this was helpful for someone uh, if you like to learn more about the black magic pocket cinema camera 4k or the gh5 or filmmaking in general make sure that you subscribe to the channel and give this video a like if it was helpful so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time